Hello again, I am Mario the Artisan Rogue, and I just got done the other day going to Hall Market. So for those of you that don't know, it is a show that is put on for artists that have either worked there before and retired or are currently working there. So and if you want to see more really cool imagery about it, you can go on Instagram under the hashtag, hashtag Hall Market to see some really cool stuff on there. Um, it's a really, really cool show. So I'm going to do a real quick overview of it because this was the first time, even though I'd worked for Hallmark for a few years full time and then now as you know, a contractor, I had never gone to the show. This was his 10th year, which is really cool. And it's, I can say this much for a corporation, for a company to want to put on a show like this, um, it doesn't cost anything for the artist to go and do the show, which is really cool. Um, they go ahead and they set up the tents and I, and I, I want to compare and contrast something here. When you do other shows like the Plaza or you do something like Planet Comic Con, there are costs involved. There's upfront costs where you have to pay for your table or, you know, your booth if you're outside at like the Plaza. There's a lot more investment and time, you know, just getting your stuff down there, getting it all set up. You're much more responsible for it. In most of those cases, you're not given a table or chairs or anything else like that. Hallmark it specifically very much catered to the artists in this, and that, that's a wonderful positive. I'm very proud to see the effort that was put into it. Now, when I got there, as I'm walking onto the grounds, which it was held not that far from, it's actually on the property of Crown Center. There's a little plaza area right in front of Crown Center uh, where the fountains were and stuff. And there's like a performing area that I think is normally like an ice skating rink. And then the, the tents were all along the way, as you can see here. And there was a great amount of people that were showing up. As I was driving up and trying to find a parking spot, I saw lines of people heading toward the show. A lot of, you know, happy smiling faces, that sort of thing. It was really nice weather, a little hot, can't complain. Yes, I can, I don't like hot weather, but I digress. It was actually pretty cool. So there was live music playing. I don't actually know who the people were that were playing. I noticed that there was a couple of different musicians that took the stage. I only assumed that those were Hallmarkers. I don't know. I think that's been the case in past years. Hallmark had a social media tent set up, which is great. And I, I didn't get a chance to go over there and see what was going on. There were people taking their pictures. I would surmise that it, because it looked like it had a background and there was a photo and you could, you know, um, get your photo taken to either show that you were, had been at the show. Um, I did see that the hashtag was available there for them to promote the show, which was great. I probably needed to have gone up and asked about it. Either way, when I talked to some of the other artists that were there, they were really happy that that was going on so that people that attended the show could do that. Now in the upper area, and I didn't get footage of this, there was the Crayola tent and then a couple of other ones. The Crayola experience was there, and I think this was, was the first year that Hallmark had them there. So going on, let me see here. Okay, so I already covered what the tents were about, that sort of thing. Let me go ahead and show you a few of the things that I picked up there that I really enjoyed. So this one's a little bit of ceramic pottery that I picked up at the show. This one's from Danny Maslon, and uh, I, you know, it's so crazy. The colors are probably not coming off as well as I thought they would with the lighting on here, but there's this really beautiful purple to almost dark blue black hue with a little hint of uh, some lighter like beige inside. It's a wonderfully made little pot, and I collect smaller ceramic vessels. This is probably my tenth or ninth piece that I have now that I display on my bookcase. And I just, I love the smaller sizes because I can get ceramics and they're not these overly huge things. I used to buy larger ones, but I really like uh, the size and the displayability of these. So the next piece I picked up was this one, Kill Em With Kindness by Corey Say. Um, I had a great conversation with him at his booth. It was really nice to meet him. He was, you know, one of many Hallmarkers I didn't know. For those of you that have never worked at Hallmark, it's a pretty big place. You can go years there and never meet everybody. There's just no way. Never mind because of where we sit, what your job is, all that sort of thing. Anyone that works for big corporations would know that sort of thing. But we got into um, a conversation about, you know, his typography, which I think was was brilliant. If you get a chance to check him out, he's on Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing. Um, his work, this, is, this one really struck out to me just because of the two-tone, the red and black sort of... Uh, you know, the limited color palette and just the really great graphic element that's on it. It's just, this is hilarious. I cannot wait to get a frame for this and get this hung up. I also got a couple of pieces from my buddy Jake Angel. And uh, this one's just, this is hilarious. I love this little guy. Um, he had this in a couple of different colorways. He had a teal one that I was really after that really, you know, was probably the coolest color out of all of them. My, my second favorite was absolutely the purple. I just love the combination of the red nose with this. The eyes are awesome. And uh, it's a little magnet. So this is the second one I have from him. 
and I'll show you that one here in just a second, what you know, the set that I now have of these two. And I also picked up this, which is my Metal Monster version 2.0. And uh, just a wonderful bit of packaging and effort put onto this. I love this. This is so, this is, this is really, you know, this is an aesthetic that's really popular right now with the urban toys. Uh, urban vinyl toys and stuff like that and as you can see it's limited 17 out of 25 number 17 or 7 is always a number I try and go for uh, as well as 13 those are just numbers I really like collecting in series I, I rarely go for number one or anything like that um, but in this case it just so happened that it was uh, an enumeration with seven in it but it was also of course my favorite color green so I'll go ahead and open this up and uh, take a closer look at this now so here's my metal monster taken out of the package this is such a clean clean freaking sculpt you can just admire the hell out of the details on this this is a great job jake this is just a phenomenal little piece i love it i'm going to leave this one as it is i just love this coloration on this one it's funny because the other version i had which this is a resin cast one here this is the one that i ended up painting up and I, it's still a work in progress i'm not finished with it yet um but this one i believe was originally gray i know i didn't end up doing an update on this right away but this was one of the most fun things I've I've uh, had the pleasure of painting. It's just he, the sculpt on it is just killer, and they make great companion pieces next to each other. It's actually kind of trippy looking at these two together and just seeing the sort of thing. I I love this aesthetic. This this little character is so cool. So I'll put these down now. And as you recall, I was showing you this one here, and this is the original one I got. And I think subconsciously I had totally forgotten that the original one I picked up was also purple. So. Um, for me, this is a huge thing. For anyone out there making these sort of little collectibles, like, I tend to be very colorway, kind of like, you know, emphasized where if I pick something up in a series, and I'm like, okay, then the rest of them have got to be purple. So now I'm going to be looking for other ones like this from him in a purple coloring. Now, the other one here. Now, I didn't end up holding this one under any light or anything else like that just because it's an original sculpture uh, by my buddy Daniel, and he did a killer job. Look at this Borg cube. I'm a huge Star Trek fan, especially of the next generation, and my favorite villains are the Borg. I have loved them for years. I've collected the toys, the figures, artwork on them, and everything else like that. Um, I just love the whole man and machine sort of, you know, thing like that. I just, it's just something that I love. It just, I really do. Um, in fact, very much, that's... Um, my my computer back here digital absinthe which was uh built by my buddy matt at b squared computers this i picked it because he had this case that i really loved that reminded me of like kind of like the aesthetic of the borg ship and so that's kind of the story there and so um when it when a chance popped up to get something original made from daniel i had asked if i could have a borg ship and that's the whole thing behind it i mean it's just cool as hell it really is there was a wide smattering of different kinds of art to look at now a lot of it was very um it, it had an aesthetic that lent itself more toward what you would expect hallmarks artists to create so very clean very uh, you know unique sort of designs that um called out to a lot of the stuff that you you would see at a gold crown store and i know that sounds weird but you know i guess you're kind of a product of you know whatever you create there now there were some that succinctly broke from that and I showed you a couple of examples right now, but there were other artists there that I saw that I was like, that's really cool. This is something I wouldn't have expected to have seen at the show, but it was wonderful to see. Like there was one particular particular lady that she was an editor and she had some really nice stuff too. I picked up her card. I am so sorry. I don't even have the card with me right now. I should have brought that down here. I always forget something. I didn't even write it down in my show notes. Um, okay, so and food. I was expecting there to be food trucks. I don't know if there were or not. I didn't end up wandering that far out there, um, mainly because by the time I was getting ready to leave, I had already purchased and picked up a few things. I'm like, you know what? I better hoof it back to the truck. I'm back. The show was from 10 to 5, which is great hours. I will say this, though. I had overheard a few people that were asking artists if it was going to be a two-day show because there were people that couldn't get off on Saturday that had wanted to come out on Sunday. And I, you know, for me, I thought, that actually isn't a bad idea. I'm kind of hoping that somebody at Hallmark makes that decision and turns it into a two-day show. The reason I'm saying that is because, yeah, it, it would give the artists a little bit more exposure. It gives them a little bit more, um, you know, ability to sell some more stuff and get some other people that probably normally wouldn't be able to make it in there. I know that I worked Saturdays for a long time at one of my other jobs and most art shows that were one day. I just never got a chance to either do, you know, as a working professional or even much less attend. So, um... Yeah, that was basically the overall view and gist of it. 
it's a great little show. Um, and I shouldn't say little. It actually had quite a few artists on it. Oh, that's something else. It just hit me right now, and I do not know where I put it. Something that, aside from the social media tent, which I think a lot of shows should really learn something from what Hallmark did with that, because that was freaking brilliant. Whoever it was in social media for Hallmark that did that, man, kudos. Thank you so much for doing that, because I know that's something that a lot of companies will often ignore. This was great to see that. The other thing that happened that I loved was now when, okay, for those of you that haven't done like a Planet Comic Con or any kind of show like that, or even like the outdoor shows, sometimes they will provide maps, but that's usually for the vendor or the artist to go find their spot, set up and that sort of thing. And then we're relegated to trying to figure out how best to promote where we are. Like I'm booth 118. So you're, tw you're changing your Twitter handle to table 118 at, you know, Supercon or whatever. In this case, when I walked in, as I was looking at the musicians that were playing on stage, there were two ladies there that had like this little, you know, bundle of, of uh, handouts and they handed it to me and it was a map. It was a show map that had everybody listed and what order the booths were in. Freaking brilliant, because I could have spent quite a while in the heat walking around. And if I hadn't known a lot of people or had a particular reason why I was going there, a determined reason, um, I might have gotten, you know, like a little bit turned around, that sort of thing. Because, you know, I know that there are people, and this is true, for those of you that have ever gone to art shows, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming. You'll go, there's just sights and sounds and things to see, or you're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to remember to come back to this booth or something like that. The best thing I saw were these two cute old ladies that were using the map and they had a marker and as they were going down i was behind them for a bit because in some of the segues where you were walking although there was a lot of room it did get kind of congested because people were stopping and talking and i saw a lot of old x hall markers catching up but there were these two old ladies that were they were sitting there and they had the they had the map and, and they were like checking off where they had been in in the line and and that sort of thing and i heard her tell her friend who's i i don't even remember her friend's name now I don't accidentally want to dox anybody uh, for whatever that's worth. But they were checking them off, and she was like, oh, yeah, we wanted to go over and see this one lady that had the jewelry. And, oh, yeah, this guy that had the painting of the dogs. And so I noticed that they had circled some that they wanted to go back to because they you know, were waiting to do their shopping toward the end. If you're going to a show for the first time, it can be overwhelming. You might go in and see it. And I and this is no joke. Even in one of the other shows I did, there was much the that – it was probably the vendor room was probably one third the size of the overall area of hall market. Um, I'd had people tell me, well, I couldn't find you. I'm like, I'm dead center in the room. I even one time when I did planet there's, if you've ever been in Bartle hall, you know, there's those massive pylons that, you know, the, the support structure of the, of the overall, uh, Bartle hall. And I often would say, cause I almost always, every year that I did it, I was by this one pillar and I'm like, I am by the massive t-shirt vendor that goes up uh, like a story and a half and the huge cement pylon. And I would take pictures. When I actually, one year, did a walkthrough and posted it to YouTube so people would see where I was. Now, um, as far as feedback to Hallmark on this, and I am gonna provide some because of course, damn it, I have an opinion. I would have loved to have seen a few more actual sponsored spots by Hallmark and highlight some of these people. Like, you know, and say, what do you do? How are you doing this? And start with kind of a longer run at it. I kind of went in with, I don't know, I don't know if I had mitigated expectations because I just didn't know. I really didn't. You know, I'm used to other shows and how they operate. And this is kind of unique. I mean, I, I really do think it is. I think the only other company that might pull something like that off is Pixar. And I'm not even totally sure on that. Somebody told me about that, that Pixar kind of does something like this. But this had an opportunity where I, you know, another thing that would have been really cool too, bring some multimedia into it, have a display set up where it's showing some other things, maybe maybe not necessarily the inner workings of Hallmark and what's going on, because we kind of touch on that in the ornament area, and we kind of touch on that in some other areas where we've highlighted that before, you know, on YouTube. But I would have really liked to have seen something more that, you know, showcased what was on display there as far as the overall consensus of creativity that is emblematically the heart and soul of what Hallmark is. I did not participate in it, but I did want to review it because I had friends in it. I picked up some really cool stuff and I think it's a show that has a lot of potential and it's helping build what art movement there is here in Kansas City. Um, I'm hoping that in the years to come, you know, it has another wonderful 10 years or more, you know, however long Hallmark decides to hold this thing. Um, it was really cool and I definitely plan on adding it to my go-to list next year, pending that I don't have another show that I'm doing. 
So thanks again for watching, guys. If you want to follow me, I am on Twitter under the Artisan Rogue. I am also under that exact same handle on YouTube. So thanks again, and I will see you guys later. I wanted to get this video done. Thank you again so much for watching, everybody. That was my review of the Hall Market Show. I did not attend. I did not actually. And that would have been, I think, a, you know, just a punctuation point that would have been, you know, an exclamation point to add on to everybody's day. And uh, did that even make sense? I don't think that did. I really don't. I'm getting tired. It's late.